The ceramic is still boiling in the liquid nitrogen. That just makes no sense to me at all. It does to me if it's like a space shuttle tile. The ceramic materials that came out of the mesa on Skinwalker Ranch, right where we believe a massive metallic object is buried, are very strange. We've been running tests on them at Utah Valley University to figure out what they are, and the results suggest they could be superconductors. Those are state-of-the-art materials that can transfer energy without any resistance and might one day be used to construct things like spacecraft with gravity-defying propulsion systems that don't require rocket fuel. It is boiling at almost the rate it started boiling. Yeah. I just can't believe something so small could withstand something that cold for that long. Typically, in order to verify if a material is a superconductor, they have to first be cooled down to liquid nitrogen temperatures of about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. But our ceramic sample has been boiling in a dish of liquid nitrogen for several minutes, and it isn't cooling down. The only materials I've ever seen with the capability to retain heat like that are the ceramic tiles that are used by NASA and SpaceX as protective coating for spacecraft. But even then, those will eventually cool down. So what is this stuff? Can we do a control? We just want to see how quickly regular ceramic will cool. It might be worth comparing that. Yeah, those blue pieces are... are They're roughly the same size, yeah. right? So let's, let's, why don't we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, anybody looking at their timer? It's running. I'm going to fill this up. As the ceramic sample from the Mesa continued boiling in the liquid nitrogen, we wanted to see for ourselves how fast a control sample of a normal, everyday piece of ceramic tile would cool down. The normal blue one's cooling down. There's a lot less bubbles than in the dish with the Mesa ceramic. Our ceramic is still going. I'm beginning to wonder whether this is ever going to stop boiling. We're going to add a little bit more just for good measure. Make sure we get nice and cold. Oh, it's st it looks like it's starting to it's calm. It's slowing down, I think. Finally. But it took several minutes longer than it should have for the Mesa ceramic to cool down. I say we give it a shot and set the ceramic over the magnet to see if it shows the Meisner effect. All right. When a material that is a superconductor is cooled to a very low temperature, it does something incredible. It creates a kind of force field within itself that repels any change in the magnetic field. The superconductor will push itself away from the magnet and possibly levitate. This is called the Meisner effect, and that's what we're testing for. If the ceramic we found is a superconductor, we expect to see it push itself away from the magnet. He's going to set this over that magnet right there. Now, if the sample becomes superconducting when it gets cool, it will repel it. To test for the Meisner effect, Dr. Patchett is placing a magnet right under the center of a dish. Then we'll place the ceramic in the dish right above the magnet to see if it pushes itself away. Here we go. It did jump a little. Did you notice that? Yeah. It did it drift. Did, it did drift. When I set yes, it down, it, it drifted to the side. Let's try it again. It. All right, here we go. It did it again. It did it again. See yeah. it? Yes. You see it? That is the Meisner effect. Yes. When we place the ceramic right over the center of the dish and the magnet, it immediately pushed itself away and to the side. If anything, you'd expect it to stick right to the magnet. But it was like the ceramic levitated away. The fact that it seemed to levitate away from the magnetic field suggests, uh, potentially, that it could be superconducting. Fantastic. We still have no idea what the massive object and other anomalies that we've detected in the Mesa are yet. But could they really be covered with superconductive ceramic materials that can absorb heat, like the protective coatings on spacecraft? If so, what the hell are they? And how did they get 472 feet in there?